Hi, everybody. It's Mr. Peacock. I'm just over here looking at this wonderful wall of thank yous from my Friar students. And all these students are so special to me, mostly because I tricked them into thinking that I was good at teaching. And much like those students are special to me, today we're going to talk about triangles that are special to everybody, specifically 30, 60, 90 right triangles. And this, this is geometry. So to, let's continue talking about special right triangles. But to do that, we actually first need to talk about a different type of triangle, an equilateral one. So let's say you have to find the height, the altitude of an equilateral triangle. Maybe you have to find the area or some other reason that you need it. So the altitude that we create to find that actually forms two different right triangles. Since one of the two acute angles is 60, the other must be complementary or 30. Now notice that splits that angle equally, which means we have created two congruent triangles, meaning those bases will be the same or half of any side. And that gives us today's triangle. Well, once we take out one of them. Part two, the 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So let's try solving this one right here. So we know that the base is 5, and as I just said, if we multiply by 2, we're going to get that that means that our hypotenuse is double that, or 10. So we have a 10-foot hypotenuse. Now we need to find this section right here, which I'm going to call B for our purposes. So I'm going to write 5 squared plus B squared equals 10 squared. That's 25 plus b squared equals 100. We subtract 25. b squared equals 75. At that point, we square root, which means that we need to, that's right, simplify our radical. For more about simplifying radicals, please make sure that you watch part one about 45, 45, 90 triangles. I'll bring that up again in a few slides. So let's see, this is 3 times 25, and of course 25 is uh, 5 times 5. We have a pair of 5's. That means this would be 5 square roots of 3 feet. Hmm. So what I'm noticing here, and it's definitely not a pattern yet, is that we have a 5. 5 times 2 gets us 10. That part we actually know is true because we've already established that. But then over here, we have that same short side, and that gets us five square roots of three feet. Hmm. I wonder if that's going to continue. It will. Okay, so now we have eight. So to get our, ba our short side, remember this is going to be half of our hypotenuse. So that's going to be four feet. All right, at which point we do the same thing. 4 squared plus b squared equals 8 squared. So let's see, 16 plus b squared equals 64. So that means b squared equals 48 when we subtract 16 from both sides. We square root it, so 48, that's going to be... Um, 2 times 24, which is 2 times 12, which is 2 times 6, which is 2 times 3. We have a pair of 2's, another pair of 2's, so that becomes 2 times 2, square roots of 3, which is 4 square roots of 3 feet. Now let's look at what we have here. 4, 4! Four. Wow! So the big rule is we really want to get down here to our short leg, which is what I'm going to call the one opposite the 30. The short leg is going to be times 2 to get to the hypotenuse, times the square root of 3 to get to 4 square roots of 3. But we've now done it twice. That's not a pattern. The only way that we can definitively prove this is if we use a variable. So instead of saying like 5 or 10, we're going to prove it by using an actual variable 
because this variable would have to work every single time. So we've already established the hypotenuse is double the short leg, so this would be 2x. Now we just need to find this, which I'm thinking will be x squared roots of 3, but let's just confirm it. So x squared plus b squared equals 2x squared. Now uh, x squared doesn't change, that becomes 2x, or sorry, x squared plus b squared, but then 2x times 2x is 4x squared. We take out our x squared, b squared is equal to 3x squared, we square root both sides, 3 times x squared, x squared is x times x, there's a pair of x's, x square roots of 3. And there we go. We've just shown that that's going to end up being our pattern each and every time. So here it is, the 30, 60, 90 bright triangle pattern. Short leg is x, long leg is x times the square root of 3, hypotenuse is 2 times x. Literally, I can put any number. And to double check that, well, first let's double check and make sure that that actually works. So 26, so in this case this is x square roots of 3, so we're looking for x. Well, that would be 26 feet. And then this is 2x, so 2 times 26 is 52 feet. Alright, so let's do some rapid fires now that we've actually shown how we would do that. So this is 7, 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times the square root of 3 is 7 square roots of 3. Alright, 12 square roots of 3, this is 12, this is 24. Alright, 6, 6 that's 2 times, so divide by 2 that's 3, and then times the square root of 3, 3 square roots of 3. Alright, 4 square roots of 3, so this becomes 4, 4 times 2 is 8, great, 12! Okay, can't really rapid fire this one. Okay, so 12 is equal to x square roots of 3. Because remember, this is x square roots of 3, this is x, and then this is 2x. So, x square roots of 3. So we'd have to divide by the square root of 3. Which means we're going to have to rationalize the denominator. For more about that, please go to the last video where I discuss exactly how to do that. But the big idea is we have to multiply top and bottom by whatever that square root is to get rid of a square root because square roots are evil in the denominator and you can't have evil square roots in the denominator uh, because then you have something evil in your basement. So 12, so this becomes square root of 3 and then we multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3. These become just 12 square roots of 3 over 3 and I can simplify 12 divided by 3 is 4 square roots of 3. Then we'd multiply it by 2. Remember when you multiply a square root by 2 you will only multiply the whole numbers so this becomes 8 square roots of 3 feet. Alright let's try another one 27 just to see if this ends up being the same. So on the last one this one ended up being about a third but let's see, so 27 square roots of 3, sorry, that's going to equal the square root of 3, equal x square roots of 3. So I'm going to divide it by the square root of 3, divide it by the square root of 3, so 27 over the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 on top and bottom. So this becomes 27 square roots of 3 over 3, which means 9 square roots of 3, and then times 2, 18 square roots of 3. Please note, if you actually had a number that wasn't perfectly divisible, you just write it as something like 5 thirds square roots of 3 for our short side. Alright, speaking of 5, here we have it. So, if we have this number right here, 5 square roots of 3 times 2 for up here, so that's 10, ooh, gross, let's rewrite that, 10 square roots of 3, 
and then times the square root of 3, so let's see, 5 square roots of 3 times the square root of 3. Anytime we multiply a square root by itself, it becomes the number on the inside. So this becomes 5 times 3, or 15 feet. Alright, let's try this one. 2 square roots of 3, so this becomes 4 square roots of 3 feet. And over here, 2 square root of 3 times the square root of 3. So that becomes 2 times 3, which is 6 feet. Alright, 16 square roots of 3. So to get the short leg, which is what I always want, I have to divide by 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8. We don't change the square root of 3. And then, 8 square roots of 3 times the square root of 3 becomes 8 times 3, or 24 feet. Alright, okay, here's our last one that we're going to do. 2 square roots of 3 feet, so remember we divide that by 2, that becomes the square root of 3. So to find over here, find our long leg, square root of 3 times square root of 3. That just becomes 3 feet. And there we go. I feel like we've done enough practice. So now all that's left is for you to like and subscribe. Please like, subscribe, comment, all those things. The things you all don't do. It's very sad. I should make this like a part of my grade. Any of you who are in my class, like you have to give me a good comment and like it. But no, I won't do that. But seriously, like and subscribe. Thank you all very much. I will see you next time on Geometry. Pew, pew, pew.